Okay, today we're going to talk about these two robots I built back in uh, 1986, in fact June of 1986, and what would that be, 30, 36 years ago? They both still work, but what's unique about them is they use a single motor to perform two different functions. And uh, normally when you use a single motor to perform two different functions, you have a uh, swinging gear. The pinion gear of your motor will throw the gear to the left or to the right, depending on which direction the motor is running. And once that gear swings, you then use that gear to drive another gear, which performs one function. And if it swings the other way, it performs another function. There was uh, an easier way to do that in many cases. And... Uh, the earliest example I can think of off the top of my head would be uh, the Golden Sonic um, spaceship type toy back in the late 50s and early 60s used the same type of mechanism which we're going to be talking about here is using ratchets just two ratchets and uh, no commentator for the motor or any of that kind of stuff but what got me going on this <clears throat> was that I have a YouTube friend right there you can see this that's uh, Rick 100 on YouTube if you like uh, projects and builds he does a lot of them and uh, some of them are just mechanical some are 3d printed some have to do with programming so if you're into any of that kind of stuff you'll probably enjoy his channel because uh, he does the same thing as me he shares everything he show, shares the build files he shares the information but what he'd done here was built this little car that uh, is on a wire remote and basically has two switches on the remote to make the motor run forward or backward and by doing that he can either make the car drive or he can change the steering wheel in the front so it can go in any direction he wants so that's the same thing that I had done here I'm gonna move the camera a little bit so I can get in there to pester everything while we're talking <clears throat> without hitting the legs of the camera too much I'd taken a dingbot which Back in the, the mid 1980s, 1986, they were like five bucks, maybe six bucks. And if you went to a swap meet or a garage sale, you could probably pick one up for under a dollar. So, anyway, I took a, a Dingbot and I modified it with a, this is a single uh, remote control from some inexpensive toy again at that time that allows a center off, forward, and reverse control of the motor. But what I changed inside the Dingbot was uh, added two ratchets, one ratchet to the drive wheel and another ratchet to the gear which is going to control the steering. And uh, whichever direction the Dingbot's going to go in, whichever way this wheel is turned, the head turns on top. So the head indicates the direction that the toy is going to go. For example, this should be the uh, drive wheel on if I pull down on this, and it is, the wheel is going around, and if I push up, then it's uh, going to pick a new direction. Now the one thing that was a disadvantage about the Dingbot, and really only one thing, is the small gear down in there that drives this larger gear on the wheel. Those two should actually be reversed. You would want the gear that's driving this wheel to be the big one, and the gear on the wheel to be the small one, so that the speed ratio change between uh, selecting your new turn direction and your movement would be about the same. So in this case, if I pull back on this, the Dingbot, if I can get this where it's not in the way, is going to go forward, as you can see. And it's going to do it in the standard way where the, the, the feet move and everything, as you can see. And now if I push up, I can select a new direction. Now it's looking over this way, so if I pull on it, it'll go over in that way. And it works very well for a, for a Dingbot. But to actually see what's going on before I had built the Dingbot, I had built this one out of metal. Back in the uh, 1980s, there weren't 3D printers yet, so pretty much everything I built was normally from metal or tin, and sometimes with a few plastic parts. Now this upper body, with the exception of the head, the head's not part of it, but this upper body was part of a robot drink cup and uh, I just kept the upper part because I went, well, that'll give you enough room to put a head in there so I can show the direction. So what you're seeing here is this big block right here. 
This is a, a servo motor, an old RC servo motor from the 70s, a really old one, which I just removed all the electronics from and just brought the two wires out so I can just turn the motor on so I can run it forward or backward. So it's just a gearbox. And that will be visible with this little coupler down here. Um, there's radio control gear up in there. You got some batteries on the bottom. And I'm going to set this right about here. Get a little remote. It's not even in a case or anything like that. So I can see if we can uh, and hold the front up. There, you see that turning in there? Maybe if I can pick it up this way. So there you can see the servo motor it just drives that shaft. And if I push the other button, it just drives it in the other direction. Now the head, you see, is going around when I push this button, like so. And if I push this one, the head doesn't, but the wheel down below drives. So what's going on is you have a single gear motor mounted on the frame with a shaft that comes all the way down and just like a standard bump and go drive at this point but all you have to do is throw a ratchet on this wheel so when it's um, not going in a forward direction it'll lock up and the little ratchet let's see if we can see it I'm gonna bring it around here is right there see that little metal flap hits this gear that's a ratchet so this wheel can only turn in one direction. Now there's another ratchet up here. You can hear it clicking. That only allows the wheel to turn in one direction. And since the ratchets lock up in the opposite ways, that allows you to select. I'm going to turn the head. Well, push the wrong button. There we go. So now the head is kind of facing more towards the camera. So if I drive, It'll go in that direction. Now I'm going to turn it, make it go backwards. Here we keep, maybe we can keep both in frame a little bit. So, there's a very basic example of using a single motor perform two functions without using the swing swinging gear off the pinion type drive it's just using two ratchets and again when you do it the other way where the motor is actually part of the drive wheel down below then you've got the, the issue of of having to bring that motor wires up into a commentator for both wires to supply power to that motor so you can forward and reverse it this uh, this system eliminates all of that electronic part because the motor always stays stationary to the body. It never moves. And you just have the uh, simple drive to the wheel. Now you don't if you don't need the upper head thing, then you wouldn't need to transfer the location of your wheel. In this case, I used uh, these are metal gears. And again, back then everything was pretty much metal. So you can see this one is just in between the two to keep everything in sync so that the, the head will turn when I when the wheel turns so they are always facing the right direction. There's other ways you could do that. The shaft could come straight up. This motor could drive from off to the side from another gear. You could rearrange things in different ways. But um, Rick, if you're watching this video, and I hope you do, this just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of a way to do it with some ratchets. If you want to try another one of your uh, miniature versions and go with some ratchets, I think you might enjoy it. It's a very simple build. And um, that's it. The modified Dingbot and the original metal one. I even have um, letters from Tomy because I had contacted them to see if they would be interested in making a Dingbot version or another robot version doing the dual drive. I knew it was nothing new. I knew they would know how it works and everything, so I wasn't looking for money. I was just throwing ideas out. And they actually wrote back. I've got, I think I've got four, maybe five letters. I know I have four letters for sure where we talked back and forth back in the 1980s, but uh, they weren't interested.